guys, Ralph here, True Power Trumpet Fitness, and welcome, welcome to Terrific, Terrific Tuesday. The sun is out, it's a beautiful day, frigid, uh, low 20s, high teens, uh, very, very cold, but uh, I'll take it, I'll take it. Anyway, uh, you saw the thumbnail, endurance, the missing piece to the puzzle, may just be. I'll, I'll explain in a minute, I have played very, very little. Let's see what we got, and we will take it from there. Oh. Anyway, Double C's and Arbin, my favorite. Number five, that's a very, very easy piece. But very, very easy piece uh, to take fast and flashy and all that sort of stuff. Um, before we get to endurance, and I have talk about, talked about endurance before, but before we get there, guys, I have to say I have a lot, a lot of comments and views and everything about Bill Chase. Uh, along with him and Maynard, I, I mean, and Maurice maybe, has there ever been more of a influential trumpet player? I think um, he didn't quite have the jazz chops that Maynard had and all this sort of stuff, but um, influential as can be. And comments and just emails out of the woodwork. And I'm here to tell you guys, one of the best, a treasure trove of Bill Chase is J.J. Martin's uh, YouTube channel, okay? He does a lot of comments uh, on the uh, uh, my video channel, a very, very big con contributor with all these little nuggets that, that go back, you know, decades. But if you are into Bill Chase, just Google J.J. Martin Trumpet. There is a novelist there that's a, not an uncommon name. J.J. Martin, Trumpet, all the Bill Chase you can possibly <laughs> you can possibly want. It is a great, great source of nostalgia trumpet as well as Bill Chase in particular. So anyway, there you go. Endurance. I've talked about it a lot, guys, and I really and truly believe that that is, I don't know if it's the missing piece, but I think that is the defining piece that really separates people from being merely excellent to great. In other words, you've got your double C first thing in the morning to the last thing at night. And you're going to end on a high G at the end of a, a two-hour performance. And you're going to play that, you know, that Sousa march, Stars and Stripes Forever, and play all the flute parts and everything, and still end on a high C. That really, really separates and we get PC here, but the men from the boys, the, the merely excellent to the great. Okay? Now, how many times have we heard, gone to a gig, gone to a performance, or whatever, and there's some guy, man, warming up that just sounds fabulous. Oh, my God, where did this guy come from? And then all of a sudden, last piece, where, where is he? Can't find him. Can't hear him. Where are you? Endurance. Guys, endurance. Now, this is, and I've talked about this before, and I'm going to say it again. It is, I love this analogy. Okay? Relax your arm. Completely relax it. How long can you do that? How long can you relax that arm? Forever. Leave it in that position. Now, without changing the position, this one over here, I'm going to start tightening up from my middle finger. See, I'm not moving. 
okay? I feel it up in my shoulder. I feel it in my elbow, forearm. I I'm feeling it down here, okay? How long am I going to be able to do that? Not very long, okay? That is endurance. The ability to stay relaxed for an extended period of time. Now, here's the deal. There has to be some firmness. You can't just relax. There has to be some firmness. And I use firmness, not tension. Okay? Tension will ruin it. Tension, if I did that for two hours a day like we practice, just tense, tense, tense. In six months, I've got carpal tunnel. I've got, I'm on pain meds. It, it, it doesn't work. You have to keep the vibrating material relaxed. Now, is it compressed? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Is it tight? Absolutely not. And the more you can do that, the more you can keep it relaxed, guys, the better you are going to be able to play, number one, and the more you are going to have, the better endurance you're going to have. Now, let me ask you this. Well, I, again, I always put it in the metaphor of the simile of, of athletes. If you take an athlete, Usain Bolt, the greatest sprinter that ever lived, and you ask him to run 100-yard dash after 100-yard dash after 100-yard dash, being completely relaxed, he's going to be able to do it for two days. But you have him do 100-yard dash after, and he's completely tight. Have him tighten up. He's going to be able to do two, and he's going to be toast. <gasps> he's going to be breathing like crazy. He's going to have pulled muscles. Guys. Physiologically, all this garbage, all the tension techniques, you gotta firm it up and you gotta feel it in the corners, that kills endurance. It just does. Anybody that tells you that doesn't know what they're talking about. It scientifically and physiologically makes no sense. Now, again, what good does it do if LeBron James can do one whirly bird dunk, okay? And then he's got to go sit down and rest because <gasps> he's tired, okay? That is why his play is diminishing the last couple of years because he has no endurance. He can't play defense anymore. He's completely lost his endurance. Now, that's a different topic, and uh, you can go to the 100-mile-per-hour one for that, okay? Uh, what if Noah Syndergaard, the great flamethrower, Araldus Chapman, 103 miles an hour for the New York Yankees. What if he could only throw one of them, and then he'd have to be exhausted, he'd have to go sit down. Guys, you have to be able to do it time after time after time after time. The same thing with your chops. You have to be able to end that high C's after all this barbed wire, double C's at the end of the night. It has to be there. And that is the difference between the great ones. Think about it. Maynard, day in and day out, he had it day in and day out. And then he'd get on the bus and he'd, he'd go to the next place, drive all night, and he'd have it again. Herseth, ungodly endurance. Ungodly endurance. Now, another thing, guys. I want you to keep in mind that this is not a perfect world we're dealing with. And I have a handful of guys that are really moaning and groaning about their endurance. And the fact of the matter is their chops are excellent. Now, guys, Name one great conductor. I can think of one that was a trumpet player, Gerard Schwartz. Everybody else has no idea what goes into being a great trumpet player. So if you're in a concert band and you're just over and over and over with no break, that doesn't mean your endurance is wrong. That means the conductor doesn't know how to run a rehearsal for, for a trumpet player. If he's a violin player, if he's a clarinet player, they don't know about trumpet endurance. And that is the most defining, the most strategic part of endurance for any instrument. Think about it. Name one, I'm going to say French horn maybe, trombone, they all have bigger mouthpieces. We have the biggest problem with endurance of any other, any other instrument. I, I did a video, I'm going to say three weeks ago, on the Fritz Werner Sweet Concertant. Gorgeous piece. 
Is there a better musician on God's green earth than Fritz Werner? He's a wonderful musician. It's a beautiful piece. It is unplayable because there's no rest. He, as much as he knew about music, as much as he knew how to write for, for trumpet, he didn't know about endurance. It's completely unplayable. Maurice himself has never performed it in public. What else need be said? What else need be said? If he can't play it, that doesn't mean we don't have endurance because we can't play it. If he doesn't, he has great endurance. I mean, he was in, in his prime, was an absolute machine, 250 dates a year, all over the world. Brandenburg, Tartini, he had amazing endurance. And he can't play that? He recorded it. And you hear it, jump cuts all over the place, changing trumpets, going from C trumpet to piccolo. Yeah, you can get through it that way. So again, if you are crashing at certain pieces, a lot of times, guys, it's not your fault. I'm telling you, I'm thinking of one guy in particular. And I won't use his name. He's a wonderful player. And his chops are fine. And he, every single time I take his lesson, oh, geez, I, I crashed at the end. Let me hear what you got. And right up to a high G, he's spot on. And he's moaning about endurance. Now, he does overblow a little bit. And we're trying, to, we're trying to work on that. But that doesn't mean his endurance stinks. That could be just the nature of the beast. Either the, the director. Well, he happens to be the director in this case. But some of the charts you're playing, again, like Fritz Werner, they don't know how to incorporate the endurance for the trumpet. The Haydn Trumpet Concerto, why do you think everybody can play that? Everybody can play that because there's enough rest in between these beautiful licks. Ba -da 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 -da. You have rest. You chop, you set, you can do it again. Everybody can do it. Brandenburg, there's even enough rest in that. If you have the upper register, that's very playable. Fritz Werner, not so much. Okay, so don't beat yourself up. Be careful about whether it's your endurance or somebody doesn't know what they're doing. Okay, keep this relaxed. Replace it with compression, and your endurance will flourish. You will not have to warm up. You'll have double C's from the first notes of the day. You'll have high C's all day long at the end of long. I mean, that is endurance. That's the missing link. That will take you from merely excellent to great but it's done through relaxation. It's not just holding this in your mouth for 20 minutes one day and 30 minutes. Let's please stop. Stop. Tension never helped anybody. Never helped anybody. Okay. I'm getting long-winded. <laughs> anyway, check out JJ's uh, YouTube channel and um, eat and drink your fruits and vegetables and live your life with true power. Love you all.